Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to our 2021 Annual Scholarship Awards Luncheon. Now, my name is Maria Howell, and I'm happy and honored to serve as your MC again this year. Ladies and gentlemen, you in for a wonderful hour this afternoon, as you'll be motivated by our keynote speaker, Warren Broadnax. He's the CEO of She's Happy Hair and founder of She's Happy Foundation, along with being inspired as you meet this year's scholarship recipients, as well as the incoming group of students who will receive their scholarships next year. Now that we're all Zoom experts, as I have become, one thing I'd like to mention, if you have any questions or experience any technical difficulties, please place that in the, mess in the messages in the chat, rather, and we'll respond back to you, okay? Also, um, I'm sure you'll all agree that the past 15 months have taught us one lesson or another. But one main lesson we've learned is that we are resilient and strong. And Students Without Mothers has been an amazing model of that strength and perseverance. Now, tough times call for tough measures. And SWM is an organization that has succeeded and triumphed with vision, fearless leadership, and support of its brilliant board members. Now, as they say on PBS, which is one of my favorite stations, and from supporters like you. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my honor to introduce a lady who is the definition of class and style, our phenomenal founder, Ms. Mary Torrance Williams. Thank you so much, Maria. I appreciate that great introduction. And thank you so much for serving on the advisory board for SWM. I know that you wear a lot of hats. You're a singer, voiceover artist, um, actress, yet you find time to MC our luncheon. We appreciate that more than you know. Thank you so much. My honor, thank you. And everyone, uh, by the way, Maria is starring in a new series uh, coming to BET soon called Sacrifice. She's co-starring with Paula Patton and Richard Roundtree. Don't miss it, it's gonna be phenomenal. So you can catch our own superstar there. So thanks to all of you for joining us, as Maria said, for our second virtual luncheon. We are definitely looking forward to being back live and in person next year. Um, so today we're excited about celebrating six students who have gone through our year long life coaching and grief counseling program and will be headed off to college this fall. In addition to their scholarships, they will also receive laptop computers that were donated by Ucensus Research, as well as dormitory items provided by Suzanne Touchstone, one of our board members, as well as many of you who have utilized the Amazon wish list to buy items for our students. So um, thank you so much, we appreciate that. And you will meet the 10 students that are coming in that after a year long life coaching and grief counseling next year, we will celebrate them with the award of a scholarship. So um, we could do none of this without the help of our supporters. Uh, we have amazing donors and supporters and you know we appreciate everyone's help to make all of this possible. So with that said, um, I'd like to point out some of our major sponsors and donors. They include uh, Radio One Atlanta, the women of AT&T, uh, Kroger, UPS, uh, Elizabeth Baptist Church, Cares for Kids, Ucensus Research, Eleven Alive, William Sonoma, uh, the Stone Mountain Chapter of Jack and Jill, and last but not least, DeVito's Pizza and Wings, which is owned by one of our very own founding, one of our founding board members, David Holt. We'd also like to recognize the sponsors of today's luncheon. They include the Jennifer Buckman family in memory of Jennifer Buckman, the women of AT&T, Kroger, Rudolph Young, uh, the family of Osri Young Kennedy, the Ali Bobbitt family, Joanne McLean, who is one of our advisory board members, Anne Scangala, the Ambrose Foundation, Kathy Scarver, Kelvin and Pamela Buncombe, Valerie Vincola, and Ezekiel Construction. So again, we appreciate all of our donors and sponsors. For a complete list, go to our website where you will also see our very much appreciated 
uh, monthly donors as well as our circle donors. So thank you all for your support. Um, now, next up, we have the amazing Stacy Kennedy. Stacy is a longtime board member and very devoted board member for Students Without Mothers. She is our past board chair. She currently serves on the advisory board and she is the advisory chair for the scholarship luncheon. So thank you so much. Here's Stacy. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Maria, as well. Thank you everyone for being on this virtual luncheon today. If you had told me 15 months ago that we would not be in Atlanta today having this luncheon, I would have been totally shocked. But here we are again, trying to have this virtual luncheon. And I wanted to take a minute to share my why. My why that I am so passionate about Students Without Mothers is that the stories that the kids are able to tell us about how just importing that scholarship into their life, how talking to them, how helping them do the best they can for uh, to be able to go through their career of being able to get through college and be able to do something successful. That's my why. And what I would ask you is that we're down this year in donations for the scholarship luncheon. We're about 53% down in our total revenues today. And so what I would ask you to do, I have a specific ask, is that you would take some time to share your why with your network, your family, and your business partners, to ask them about giving to students without mothers. We are making an impactful change in the lives of these students that you'll hear about today. And so we're just asking you to go into the chat, to be able to look at how you can donate and take that link from the chat and take a few minutes over the next, you know, hours after this event and share with your network your specific why. That would really help us to be able to increase our overall donations. The other reason why I'm here today is to introduce our great speaker. Maria talked about Warren as a CEO, and I want to talk about Warren as a serial entrepreneur from that perspective that also is determined to give back from a philanthropic perspective to the community where he lives and works. And when you think about being a serial entrepreneur, when you have multiple businesses and to also think that Warren has made a decision that giving back to the community is also one of his top priorities. It's something for us all to learn from and to remember as we move forward in our own personal lives. You see, Warren's story is not one of all gold and glitter. He started as a fireman. He, I mean, he went to, he's been in the military, but yet he still wanted to do something to be a businessman, to be an entrepreneur, to do the best that he can. And I know sometimes you'll hear these stories how, you know, you started from the bottom and now you're at the top. This is a true story of a person who's done that. He's grounded. He's also grounding. He's continually learning and reading for the betterment of himself and for his business. He is a continuous lifelong learner. So what I would say about Warren today and I think one of the things that he would tell you is, you may fall down, you may fail. It may not be the perfect path. You may have lost your mother at an early age over life. You may still have your parent or your mother with you today, but never ever stop living your life for the best. And so today I would like to turn it over to Warren Brodnick, our keynote speaker. Thank you for that absolutely great introduction, uh, Stacey. Uh, thank you to the donors and this absolutely amazing organization. Um, like Stacey said, my name is Warren Broadnax. I am a serial entrepreneur. I am from Houston, Texas. I am more than honored to be here to you student, with you students today. And uh, before I get into my story, I just want to tell you uh, one of my favorite quotes. And it is... Um, what happens in you is more important than what happens to you. Wow. 
And I think the fact that uh, the obstacles that these students have occurred in life and the fact that they are where they are right now today uh, proves that, that what happens in you is more important than what happens to you. Now, me, I am a, a uh, product of uh, America, a uh, single parent household. Uh, as I grew up through um, childhood, I went to five different elementary schools, went to four different middle schools and uh, one high school. The reason we moved so much is because uh, every time the rent was up in our household, my mother had to pick up me and my sister and she had to move. I, like uh, maybe a lot of students here, I didn't really see a, a great role model growing up. I uh, had seven uncles, uh, all of whom which did at least 10 years in prison. So growing up and looking for someone who looked like me to see success and someone who looked like me, I didn't see it. Uh, but I did not let that get me down. At that point, I kind of tapped into my imagination and I would learn from the mistakes that my uncles made and that my father made and decided that I, that's not the life I wanted for me, right? So despite your, 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 your current situation, despite your upbringings, I'm talking to each and every student here, you can be as great as you imagine you can. That positive mindset, again, what happens in you is way more important than what happens to you. As I was growing up, I would look at different men in my family and just knew like, okay, that's not the, step, the, the path I wanna make. Those aren't the steps that I wanna take. And I chose a different path. And I wanna let you know, if it's no matter your friends, no matter your family, you can choose that same path. The fact that you're sitting here with us today lets me know that you're on that path. I'm here to put this battery pack in your back and tell you to keep going. Once I left and graduated high school uh, 20 years ago now, I, um, I went on a lot of high school tours, but no one in my family had been to college, like a few of your stories I read today. So when I graduated, I didn't even fill out an application. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And at that point, I had to make a decision for myself. I didn't want to fall for the same trajectory that a lot of my family members did. So at that point, understanding that usually adult men in my family go to jail, I made the decision to join the military. It was definitely the best decision I ever made in my life. I joined the United States Navy and uh, I just walked into the, to the uh, recruiting office one day and decided like, this is how I'm gonna change my life. And then two weeks later, I was in the United States Navy. What the Navy taught me is you're stronger than you think you are. They put me in so many different situations growing up and, and being challenged in the Navy where, I, where, you, where you're meant to bend and break. But I learned in every, each one of those situations, if you, if you just keep a calm head and keep a positive mindset, this too shall pass. And I tell that to you students, because y'all about to get, life is about to get real, right? You're about to put yourself in some situations and life is not going to get easy. Newsflash, it is not going to get easy. But you need to know that you are stronger than you think you are. So when the pressures of life get on you, keep that positive mindset. Don't quit, be fearless and be relentless. After doing four years in the military, I came back to Houston and I spent about five years at Harris County Juvenile Probation. So I was basically a correction officer for the Juvenile Detention Center here in Houston. And during that time, I spent time with the kids and I talked to the kids and I realized that everybody does not get a fair shake. I talked to students who were actually inmates, honestly, who was 16 year old and charismatic and who had the whole world ahead of them. And I would talk to them and they'd tell me like, I I'm illiterate because my mom had eight of us, five boys and three girls, and she never spent a minute on, on the boys. We had to fend for ourselves from day one. And I understood then, like, we all don't get a fair shake. But again, what happens in you is more positive, more, more impactful than what happens to you. And I would speak life into that, those kids in there. And some of them I still see today, and they still talk about the, the conversations we used to have in there. So we all come from our obstacles. Every person who's successful I know is a self-made person. I read a quote the other day and I, and I want y'all to take it. And it said that uh, you could be the world's best kept secret. Put that chip on your shoulder today. Know that for yourself, that you could be the world's best kept secret. The greatness is in you. It is up to yourself to pull it out. After leaving the juvenile detention center, I became a Houston firefighter, a public servant at heart. I love that job. Uh, and the fire academy, reminded me a lot of those life principles that I learned in the military. Through our basic training, the whole thing is to, is to break you, is to put you in situations where other people have perished and you have to 
think your way through them. And all of those things prepared me for entrepreneurship. All those things prepared me for life. And I think a lot of those lessons that I learned are things that I want to share with y'all. And it's all about internal. It's all about your mindset. It's all about what's in your heart. The world is going to be chaotic around you. It is not going to be easy. Don't expect it to be. Times are going to be hard. Be harder than the times. These are the mindset that you have to have to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. As I was growing up as a child, I always knew I would get here. I always knew I would get here. I don't know how, right? I always knew in my head that I wanted to be the person to speak life into other people like me. I want to be the person that they can see and say, ah, oh, I can do it. I can come from a family where I don't have role models. I can come from a family of, 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 of true trauma. I can come from not a great place and make life beautiful. I'm telling you, you got those same strengths in yourself. You have to absolutely believe it. When the times are the toughest, that is when you have to go inside of yourself, tap in, and know that you will make it. One of my other favorite sayings in life is, not, is, is that it's, it's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. I say that about 30 times a day usually in entrepreneurship because there's so many problems <laughs> that come at me, so many failures that I, that I remember. And, and what that does is that calms me down. Because when life is at its hardest, I think people kind of quit when they expect it to be easy. It's, oh, it's harder than I thought it was going to be. I'm out. I quit. Tell yourself it's not supposed to be easy. So that when the, when the pressure's on, you know that this is not supposed to be easy. This is normal. I, I'll figure it out, right? Like, it's supposed to be hard. You have to play these mental games in your head to overcome each and every obstacle. I, I hope I'm, I'm giving you a theme today. And it's all based in, in that quote. What happens in you is way more uh, important than what happens to you. Remember those things. The world is, is, a, is a crazy place. It's tough. But you can be whatever it is you want to be. What do I wish someone told me when I was 17 or 18 about to graduate high school? Follow your dreams. Whatever you love doing, spend your time there. Spend your energy there. Become a professional at it. Try to become the best at whatever that is. Whatever you love doing. Trust me, 20 years ago, we would not think YouTubers would be making millions of dollars. <laughs> there was no YouTube, right? So I don't want you to think or let the pressures of the current society shape you. Whatever you love, spend all your time there. Spend all your energy there. Every successful person I talk to, it's like, what one regret do you have? It's like, man, I wish I would have started early. Start now. No idea is too crazy if, if it's something that you truly love. I read about nurses. I read about people want to be teachers. I read about people want to go in sports. Spend all your time and energy in that. Put your whole life around that. Another thing I wish somebody would have told me at 17, is you're, you're just gonna be as successful as the people you're around. You're going into a new transition in life where you're gonna meet a lot of new friends. Be particular about who you spend your time with. If they don't have the same interests as you, remove yourselves. Have enough courage to remove yourself. A lot of times people ask me, what is success? And, and I think I heard a, a Tony Robbins quote, and he was like, success, it's just an accumulation of a lot of great decisions. Make the best decisions for yourself right now in life. I'm not telling you to go out and enjoy yourself, but go out and enjoy yourself with people who you know that are on your same wavelength, that are going the same places that you are in life. Be selfish with your time. I think if you look at my background, you know reading is more than essential. I don't have a college degree, but I'm a lifelong learner. I take classes and more seminars. Uh, I probably pay for tuition every month <laughs> with the amount of seminars, the commitment to learning that I'm doing. You have to have take these scholarships that they're offering you and really pour into yourself. You got to be prepared. The world is going to make space for you. The world is going to make space for you. You're going to be 20. You're going to be 25. You're going to be 35. The world is going to make space for you. Be intentional about the space that you create. All right? You hang around the wrong people. That space 
may be a, a space you didn't see for yourself. In my family, a lot of those spaces were prison cells because the world will make space for you. I intentionally didn't want that for myself. If you hear the year long counseling you got, the great leadership you got from them people, I know you don't want that for yourself. So be intentional about the space that you make. I don't know if I live to be 100, but I know what I wanna be doing at 100. I don't know if I live to be 60, but I know all the steps I'm taking to make sure that I'm on the beach drinking uh, uh, mahi mahi when I'm, when I'm 60, right? Be intentional about it. If you know you wanna be the greatest teacher ever, make every step right now to get you there. If you know sports is your passion, learn everything about it. Dedicate yourself to it. Be intentional. Be intentional about the, the, the company you keep. Be intentional about the thoughts that you allow in your head. Be selfish about the thoughts that you allow in your head because it's gonna take you right back to that quote. What happens in you is way more important than what happens to you. Everybody's on the same marathon of life. The successful people made better decisions. The Stacys, the Marias, right? They made better decisions. Be intentional about that. I'm gonna leave you with that last quote because I believe in you. And that is, you can be the world's best kept secret. Do the work. Do the work. Life is going to be tough. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. Anytime you feel that pressure, know that you were built for it. That's why you read the books. That's why you dedicate the time. So that when the pressure comes, that's why you prepare in the military. That's why you prepare in, in, in the fire department. So when, it, when the fire is on, all you know is go. When everybody's running out the house, we, we train to run in it. So if you prepare yourself mentally for the tough times, when they come, you go take that pressure a little bit more than everybody else. With the adversities that you have already experienced, you are way more prepared than your peers. You have to know that. With the adversity, the things that you have overcame already, you are way more prepared than your peers who had it easy. And I know that's my competitive advantage in business. I know a lot of people didn't overcome what I overcame. I know they didn't come where I come from. I know they're not built the same. I know when the pressures come, they go bend or break. I will not fold. No matter the circumstances, you have to know that you are just that great. You got to know it. Despite where you come from, despite your adversity. Thank y'all for having me. I'm happy to be here. And uh, I was going to donate 1000 but I'm donating 2000 because we're 53% under. So uh, I, I need to be donating, donating my 2000 today as well. Uh, thank y'all so much. Oh, Warren. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Maria, I'm going to turn it over to you before I start crying. I, uh, I, I, okay, I'm done crying. Warren, um, you spoke with us last year spoke for us, spoke with us, spoke to us. And this year, I didn't think you could get any higher or exceed any of the inspiration from last year, but you have totally just blown that out of the water. I commend you so much for being dedicated to who you know you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do. I, I feel like um, <laughs> I, I was writing, I wrote down quotes and in addition to the students, I think we all have a lot to learn. There are a lot of takeaways here. and. I, I once I gave a speech to a high school group of students and my whole topic was be in the in crowd. And my big word was intentional. And I think that's the key. You have to be intentional about everything you do. Do the best to make the best decisions and be educated so you can make the best informed in, uh, decisions. And, and you're so right. I mean, we're stronger than we think we are. I, I can't even reiterate that enough. You could be the world's best kept secret. I tell people that all the time. You, if you compare, comparison kills. If you compare yourself to other people so much, you spend too much time there instead of looking and seeing what God has given you to do in this world. And what happens in you is way more important than what happens to you. That's mine. Okay, I'm gonna leave that right there. Thank you. I feel like I've been educated and so uplifted. Um, 
We thank you so much for being with, with us today, Warren. Uh, your story has moved and inspired so many and you serve so many others in your life and you're a true testament to your calling and your purpose. Um, you've made so much impact. You, you've had such a great impact on, on young and old alike uh, as we can see here today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope that you will continue. We all do, we support you and hope that you will continue to walk in your purpose and your calling. So thank you everybody. We're giving a silent, if you wanna put that little raise hand thing up there to um, clap for Warren, that, that's just amazing. <laughs> you can tell I'm overwhelmed and um, oh. I'm coming down off of it. It's been, been very emotional. Thank you so much. And I pray that the students will have something, some seeds planted today that they will let others in their lives nurture and water so that they can blossom into their own walk and their calling. All right. Another housekeeping tip I want to remind everybody of the donation link. And thank you, Warren. That was such a nice segue uh, into the donation mentality. Um, we have a donation link in the chat. So feel free throughout this luncheon, right after, share the link with others that you know. Any amount is wonderful. And we really appreciate it and welcome it. OK, so next. I'd like to introduce a very special young lady, and many of you may have not met her in person, but you've probably received an email or two from her uh, saying, thank you for your generous donation. <laughs> her name is Sylvia Ware, and she serves as our program coordinator for SWM. She's a recent graduate of Emory University, where she received a Bachelor of Arts degree in sociology and music. She's currently pursuing her master's degree in social work from Georgia State University. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you, Ms. Sylvia Weir. Thank you, Maria. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm doing the controls and I'm talking. So we'll see if I can multitask. Um, I'll start with this. If you have attended our on-site luncheon in uh, years past, you may remember bidding on silent auction items as a part of our luncheon fundraising. Um, this year, we've created a virtual auction that can be accessed directly on our website. As luncheon supporters, you'll be able to preview the items starting today by visiting the link uh, posted in the chat box. Uh, and I'd like to just show you kind of what that looks like um, by sharing my screen. Um, so you'll see here, there will be a, a page where you can visit um, using that link. It'll show up in this sidebar um, once it's available to the public. Um, and you can just scroll through. These are some of the items that we have listed. As you can see, we have um, furniture, gift cards, um, you know, memberships to uh, various places in Atlanta, um, technological devices, sports memorabilia. Pretty much there's something for everyone here. Um, so I highly recommend checking this out. You can preview the items now. Um, and we would like to give a special uh, shout out thank you to our silent auction committee um, for doing amazing work securing these items for us. Um, the bidding for the silent auction will begin this Friday at 5 p.m. That's June 18th, and it will end at 5 p.m. on Sunday, June 20th. And we hope you'll con uh, consider participating in that. Obviously, um, it's just another way that we can fundraise for these amazing students. Uh, and now we will turn to a brief video that will hopefully allow you to get to know uh, this year's scholarship recipients a little more. Um, Mary and I actually just got to meet them for the first time in person while recording this video, um, obviously due to the pandemic, uh, and it was just inspiring to hear from them. And you will see um, and hear from five out of the six scholarship recipients that are here today. So without further ado. My name is Cameron Exposé. Okay, my name is Marilyn Rivera. My name is Patrick Drummonds. Uh, my name is Jacob Brown. Hi, my name is Kelly King. Um, I'm graduating from East Kelly to high school. I am attending Stevenson High School. Um, I go to South Winter High School in Snowville. I just graduated from Campbell High School. I will be graduating from Brookwood High School. The things I like to do for fun is playing sports, um, helping my dad out, helping my brothers out, and hanging out with my friends. 
for fun. I'm a real big athlete. I um, play football and baseball. Um, I like to fish, I like being outside. I enjoy hanging with my friends. Um, I really enjoy my free time. So if I can stay home and watch a movie or go outside and chill out there. I like going out with my friends, um, go to Six Flags, go to the mall, go to the park. Play lacrosse and watch anime. When I found out I received the Students Without Mother Scholarship, I was surprised because I didn't really think I was going to get it. But I'm honestly really like, proud of myself because I was able to get it and I'm really excited for everything in the future. Um, I felt good. Um, it's, it's great to know that people are, are out there that kind of understand the situation I'm in and are willing to help. I felt really grateful when I received the scholarship because most people wouldn't give scholarships needed, like people were really needed. So I feel really grateful to get this scholarship and I'm happy. When I received the Students Without Mothers scholarship, I was happy because that's just more money towards college and then college is expensive. So all the scholarships I can get is like, helpful for me and then it just it just makes it puts a smile on my face makes me happy i was really grateful and that i felt like it gave a purpose to what i've gone through kind of like wow someone actually sees how it is and i was grateful to be rewarded that um because it was kind of hard growing up without a mom uh my biggest inspiration is my dad because He's taught me everything in life, what to do, and it helps me out. And he got me to college, and I'm really grateful to have him. That's why he's my inspiration. My brother, my big brother, um, Jeremy, um, he's my biggest inspiration because um, I feel like he's a really like hardworking person. And he's always there for me when I need him. And he gives me advice. And I really look up to him because he's my oldest brother. So he's like always like there. When we were smaller, we didn't really get along. But like once, I guess when my mother had left us, like we got closer. And I, I guess I really appreciated that. And I'm glad we were closer now and that we could talk to each other about anything. Uh, my biggest inspiration would probably have to be my dad. Um, he owns his own business and he's worked since he was like 18 out of high school, um, creating this business for himself. And I look up to him for that. My biggest inspiration would probably be myself because I'm highly self-motivated as in like, if, because I look up to myself and I know I can do whatever I put my mind to, and I just gotta decide to do it. Uh, my biggest inspiration is probably my sister. Um, she's been through everything I've been through and she handles it completely differently than I have. Um, she tries to stay happy all the time and it kind of just helped me stay motivated. She's, uh, I don't know, she was really young when it happened, so she didn't take it the way everybody else took it. And I mean, as she's getting older now, she's starting to like experience different emotions, but at first she didn't, like obviously it hurt her, but it was different. She was young, so she was you know, always still trying to play and always happy. And it was just one of those things, like, okay, I gotta stay straight so she knows what to do and she can, she has me. Um, in the future, I'm really hopeful for becoming a nurse. I would like to help people, and that's what I like doing. I'm hopeful that I can get this job being a sports analyst. I want to uh, pursue my dreams in the future. Um, what I'm most hopeful for in my future is being successful, being the best version of myself I can be, being, um, being able to make someone's day 
with little things. I'm hopeful for the future and how uh, college ends up for me. Stability, I want to make sure that my family has what they need whenever they need it. I will be attending Kennesaw State University in the fall. I will be attending Marshall University. In the fall, I would like to attend Fort Valley State University. I'll be attending Kennesaw State University in the fall. In the fall, I'm going to go to Georgia Southern University. course oh my goodness <laughs> I think every year <laughs> I think every year I'm feeling the same emotion and that emotion is one of hope one of inspiration of course but just to hear the students stories should touch us in a way that we can relate to some of these situations um I, I remember telling Mary uh, Torrance Williams when I first met her, I can't imagine what it would be like to go through college um, without my mom. And so my heart is so deeply involved and invested in what this is. So I congratulate each one of you students. Thank you so much for being a part of our family, Students Without Mothers family. Um, I was in college on a scholarship, so I can relate to what that feels like and what that means and coming from a large family. So thank you for your perseverance. Thank you for your dedication and your diligence and your just being here with us. It is my privilege to present each of this year's recipients with a scholarship in the amount of $4,000. The funds will be dispersed in annual payments of $1,000 as long as the student continues to meet the program's requalifying criteria. I want to individually um, speak to you. First, I want to introduce, reintroduce, because that video was just so moving. So thank you again, uh, Sylvia for, and Mary for putting that together because of course I left my Kleenex to the side. I didn't get to wipe my eyes like I had planned. So um, first we have Jacob Brown, who is a graduate of Brookwood High School. And Jacob plans to attend Mercer University. So Jacob, do you have a word or two for us? Um, a word I would say is whatever you put your mind to, you can do. Um, allow, don't allow your thoughts to bring you down. Um, do everything you can to stay positive, stay happy, and you'll be successful. Good words, good words to live by. You sound like a young, wise person already. So continue on. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Patrick Drummonds. Hi, Patrick. Hello. Hi. Patrick is a graduate of South Gwinnett High School, and he plans to attend Georgia Southern University. Any words for us, Patrick? Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has done anything to help over the last couple months, um, the Zoom sessions, um, when I got to meet some people in person, it was great. I just want to say thank you to everyone. And um, I want to tell everybody that, like, a glow stick has to break before it shines. So I like to look at things like that. I mean, you got to dig really deep to find diamonds, if that makes sense. Um, all of this is just going to make us grow and shine brighter at the end of the day. So you, you're wonderful. I thank you. You you all are, have these wise nuggets. Thank you. Thank you. Much success to you. Next we have Cameron Charles Exposé. He's a graduate of Stevenson High School and Cameron plans to attend Fort Valley State University. I see two um, brothers there. We have it, what, Cameron raise your hand so we see which one you are right. <laughs> Cameron, do you have anything for us? Uh, I would like to say that this program was really good, helpful. You guys taught me so many things in, uh, to learn in the future. 
and what I gotta say to the new future um, participants are to keep on going and no matter what, like just put your mind to it and everything will be good. Straight. And my um, brother, uh, that's my brother Jonathan right there. So he's yeah, yeah. So yeah. Awesome. And I have an older brother too, but he's up here sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Cameron. Next, we have Kelly King. Kelly is a graduate of East Coweta High School and plans to attend uh, Kennesaw State University. And we also have some board members that graduate from Kennesaw. Woo -woo. <laughs> Do you have anything for us, Kelly? Um, I would just like to thank you all for all the things that you've done for me. I'm very grateful. Um, I would say definitely don't compare yourself and everyone has a little bit of spark in them and they can be as successful as they wanna be. So don't give up and keep going. And I'm just very grateful. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I also want to recognize Lisa Lewis. She's a graduate of Westlake High School, and Lisa plans to attend Georgia State University. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Um, I guess I just want to say that I'm really grateful for this program, and it's a really great program. I'm so happy that I was chosen to be a part of it. And uh, to the future recipients, I just want to say that for me, this past year has been really hard and there's gonna be a lot of things that are gonna try to keep you from getting there, from being successful, from being who you're meant to be, but you just have to stay focused and just keep going because at the end of the day, you're doing this for you, nobody else. And don't even listen to the naysayers because you got this. That's right, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we have Marilyn Overa. Marilyn graduated from Campbell High School and plans to attend also Kennesaw State University. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, um, I just wanna say thank you to everyone and um, good luck to the future recipients and yeah, that's all. Awesome. Thank you so much. To each and every one of you, you are amazing. Um, so wise beyond your years. Um, so you're on a good, good road to success, the personal success, career success, all of it. Just make sure that you know you have support from Students Without Mothers. We love you. We support you. We thank you for being a part of the family. Congratulations to each and every scholarship recipient. And now um, I would like to um, introduce a very special family. We're going to award an additional $1,000 scholarship to one of today's recipients. That this scholarship, the Cheryl Bobbitt Community Scholarship is in memory of Cheryl Bobbitt who passed away in 2013. Cheryl was employed by AT&T and was an exemplary member of the SWM Board of Directors. She also served on several boards and supported many organizations, always helping the underserved communities. The winner of this scholarship is based and selected on their community service. And here to present on behalf of the family of Cheryl Bobbitt is Cheryl's daughter, Natasha Bobbitt. Thank you, Maria. I am so glad to be here today amongst all of you, um, especially having the opportunity to still shine light on such a phenomenal woman as Maria just pointed out, whom I was uh, lucky enough to call my mother. Um, for those of you who don't know my mother, she was a community service advocate. Um, she spread herself in so many different directions for so many different causes and organizations, including Students Without Mothers. So I am just honored to be here to continue on her work 
and to provide a scholarship to a deserving student for their community service efforts as well. And so for this year, um, the Cheryl Bobbitt Community Service Scholarship recipient is Cameron Expose. Uh, I had the opportunity to read Cameron's community service essay as well as his um, scholarship recipient essay, and I, excuse me, essay, and I was just moved um, by his story and all the things that he has done. Cameron has done quite a few different community service events with the fraternity Alpha Phi Alpha. So I'm assuming Cameron, once you go to Fort Valley State, that's what you're going to pledge, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, definitely I commend you for all the work and effort you have done in the community and just for yourself overall. And I wish you nothing but the best. And congratulations on being a scholarship recipient for Students Without Mothers, but as well as for the Cheryl Bobbitt Community Service Scholarship. Thank you. <laughs> oh, do you want to put it? Am I supposed to um, say my speech or something? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I've been doing um community service since eighth grade. Uh, like like on uh, Natasha said, uh, I've been uh doing it since I was a bow in a uh, mentorship program and Alpha by Alpha pro, um bow mentorship program and uh I also was in a in a Project Mel also. And we fed the homeless like many of times, two two years in a row. And we did a lot of things with Alpha Phi Alpha, such as um gift like voting registration, holding up signs at schools, and Thanksgiving stuff, and baskets and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Cameron, and like I said, I wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. And to all the students as well, the same. Congratulations. Thank you, Natasha. Congratulations, uh, Cameron. I'm Joanne McLean, and I'm pleased and proud to serve at the Life Coach Director and uh, Grief Counseling Support. I have the honor of working with these students when they first come into the program. And you can tell even over the Zoom, they're a little tentative, they're a little scared, and they blossom over the year. And I'm just so pleased and proud to see them and see how they grow. Now, we deal with lots of different courses, um, some college prep, some basic manners, some just learning what to do, how to interact with your peers, as well as individual and group counseling to deal with the issues of grief. This helps the students move in this very important transitional year as they take the first step on a journey to the rest of their life. Now, I don't do the hard work. I'm pleased to introduce Natasha Robinson and Hope Williams and they're going to introduce you to some of the students. Thank you, Joanne. It's always a pleasure to work with students without mothers. Um, I feel that it's such an honor each and every year. And I think Maria said it best earlier. It's the same emotion. I get the same feeling, the same emotion when we come together um, at the at and building and even here on Zoom. It is just such a warm delight and um, to see each and every student blossom from day one when they walk into the classroom or in this virtual war world, if you will, uh, to see them from the beginning and to build that relationship with them over time. It is just such an overflow of blessings. So I, I don't take it for granted. I'm totally thankful. Um, it's 
whether they know it or not, it's like they have taught me something. I'm not so much teaching them, we teach one another. So I'm grateful and honored. I'm so proud and happy for each one of you who have graduated the um, life coaching sessions. And um, I'm looking forward to the new students that will uh, take place this fall. We've already had an opportunity to have one coaching session with them already in May. So here are the oncoming students. We have America Banks, who attends Frank McLaren High School. She plans to attend Emory University. We have Brooklyn Davis, who attends Mount Zion High School and plans to attend North Carolina Central University. Uh, Jonathan Exposé, who attends Stevenson High School who also plans to attend Fort Valley State University. Alexa Harkey, who attends Lassiter High School and plans to attend University of Georgia. And An Anila Maxwell, who attends Martin Luther King Jr. High School and she plans to attend University of Georgia. I look forward to working with each of you. And now I will turn it over to Hope Williams. Hello, I am also very pleased to help welcome the following new students to this wonderful program. Uh, Savannah Miller is currently attending Walnut Grove High School and plans to attend Emory University. Maya Phillips is currently a student at Whitfield Christian Academy, I'm sorry, Whitefield Christian Academy and plans to attend Louisiana State University. Shakimia Turner, is a student at Alpharetta High School and plans to attend Spelman College. Keon Walker is a student at Fayette County High School and plans to attend Georgia Institute of Technology. And Christine Warner is at Cass High School and plans to attend Kennesaw State University. I am very grateful for the opportunity to be part of the work that is done by Students Without Mothers. As a therapist, I work with a lot of clients for different reasons, and this is an assignment that has a personal connection for me, and it's an honor to serve here. I look forward to being able to get to know all of you during the upcoming school year and to help you create the community that you deserve and desire. So thank you again for the opportunity to work with you all, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Hello again, I'm Mary Torrance Williams, founder and executive director of Students Without Mothers, here to make just a few brief announcements and close out the program. I hope everyone enjoyed the celebration of our students. Warren, what a message. All I can say is somehow you managed to raise the bar since last year. Um, what a message, we're all truly motivated. Based on the remarks from the students, it's clear that they got a lot from your message. I know the adults certainly did. I made several notes that I plan to refer to when I need a push. Maria, we appreciate you more than you know. Thanks so much for emceeing the program and for keeping us on time today. As I close, I would be remiss if I did not recognize our board and advisory board. We're a very small organization with one and a half staff members. We rely heavily on the support of our working board and our volunteers to raise money and to operate the programs within the organization. So please allow me a moment to recognize our board chair, Don Roman, as well as all, the mem all of the members of our board and advisory board, and they are Reggie Prime, Maria Howell, Stacy Kennedy, Paula Smith, Suzanne Touchstone, Joanne McLean, Cassandra Brown, Stacy LaCroix, and Gloria Pickney. Also, thanks to the founding board members and past board members who joined us today for the event and for all of the support that you continue to provide. Last and not least, I have to acknowledge Sylvia Ware, our program coordinator, who many of you work with day in and day out. Sylvia is truly phenomenal. She ran the controls for today's meeting. She's a huge asset to SWM and we really appreciate her. That is it. Um, 
please be sure to go to our website for more details on upcoming events. We have an online silent auction this weekend and other events planned for this fall. So please visit the website to stay up to date. And if you're not currently getting the, our monthly newsletter, please be sure to sign up for that as well. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.